Hi everyone. This is the final video in a four-part series addressing some of the things that I've learned the hard way during my recent eyepocalypse, uh, which is the term that we gave to my needing emergency eye surgery in both eyes at the same time for retinal detachment. So to wrap up that series, today's truism is a little more philosophical, uh, that basically sometimes it takes getting derailed to see the tracks that you're on. You know, humans have always craved routine, right? So it's not a new phenomenon that our days often begin with a familiar dance. But that dance has changed radically over the past few years, and it, it really hasn't been subtle. You know, now we wake up, our eyes are barely open, and we instinctively reach for our phones. That's not something we did 15 or 20 years ago, uh, but now it's actually been pretty hard-coded over the last 10. It's become a norm and a reflex, but beyond just altering our routine, it's shaping the way that we engage with life. So this recent eye situation forced me to break this cycle, and it allowed me to take a pretty hard look at my routine. Um, for the first few days after my surgery, I couldn't see much of anything, and I couldn't sleep too well either. So I was off in a room by myself, um, waking before everyone else, and I was under heavy physical restriction, so there wasn't much I could do other than just lay there until I heard the rest of the house coming to life. The first day was painful uh, and not being able to follow my typical routine was not helping the fact that I was in a pretty uncertain and dark place emotionally, if I'm being honest. But it's wild because as early as the second day, that hour or so started to become a sanctuary. I was reflecting, I was breathing, I was present, I was listening to the birds outside. It was like flexing a muscle that I know I've let atrophy, reconnecting with the world beyond the screen and myself, right? This experience made me question certainly my own rituals that maybe have become ruts. Uh, you know, like, why do we let these habits and these devices dictate our lives? I'm certainly doing that. What is it doing to our well-being? Just like they say that nobody on their deathbed is, you know, wishes that they spent more time working. I don't think anyone's going to wish that they had done just a little more doom scrolling. I'm afraid that there's a lot of regret building up there. And for those of you who've already swapped scrolling for meditation, and notifications for a peaceful cup of tea, I salute you. I certainly have paid lip service to the benefits of those kinds of routines, but then I don't even notice it when I'm just going back to the same well because it's so well-worn and comfortable. In fact, after regaining a little bit of sight, what did I do? You guessed it. But I did feel the liberation of reclaiming those precious moments, and I'm thinking more about how to find the right balance as I go forward. I have no doubt that doing it actually better prepared me for their day and had me in a better headspace, because otherwise, you know, it's fire drills from the moment you pick that thing up. It's still happening while you're eating breakfast, and then boom, you're into it without a seatbelt for the rest of the day until your head hits the pillow at night. Orwell is rolling over right now and saying, I told you so. This time I'm really hoping that I'll listen because sometimes it takes getting derailed to see the tracks that you're on.